How do you respond when life throws you curveballs? <laughs> Whether it's the grocery store clerk who's rude in the checkout, the other driver who cuts you off on the road, <laughs> or the kid who sasses you on his way out the door for school. When things don't go your way, how do you respond? Is it with angry frustration? <sighs> Passive aggression? I'm fine. Yeah. You're fine. fine. Everything's fine. fine. Are you rude right back? Or do you respond with grace? Welcome back to the Women of the Bible podcast. I'm Erin Davis, and I'll be your host. In each episode, we'll open our Bibles to 1 Samuel 25. We'll look at the life of Abigail and see how she encourages us to respond differently to the difficult people in our lives. Life will always throw us curveballs, but through the life of Abigail, the Bible shows us we can respond with grace. So pull up a chair, grab yourself something warm to drink, open your Bibles to 1 Samuel 25. Let's discover how to respond when life throws us curveballs. Welcome back to the Women of the Bible podcast. I'm Erin Davis. We're so glad you can join us. This season is all about Abigail. When you think of women of the Bible, you might not think about Abigail. But as we walk through this study titled Abigail, Living with the Difficult People in Your Life, you're going to love Abigail. And you're going to learn to deal with the difficult people in your life. We Hallelujah. Hope. That's yes. the goal. That is and the so goal. And so we're gathering around a table uh, with our Bibles open, with the Bible study. I've got some friends of mine that have joined me. I'll let them introduce themselves to you in a minute. But that's our hope for you. Uh, I hope that you're not just walking through this study on your own. I hope that you're gathered with women, with neighbors. And this is only session two. There's still time. Call your friend that lives three states away <laughs> and say, let's walk through the Abigail study together. Yeah. Let's listen to the podcast episodes. Let's discuss uh, because anytime we open the Bible, it's good. It's profitable. It's good for our hearts. But there's just something about opening the Bible with other women, yeah. looking at it from multiple angles. Yeah. And that's what this is. So without further ado, and that was a lot of ado, I want to introduce you to the friends who are here with me. First is my friend Meg. Meg and I really hang out. This we really do. <laughs> we live in neighboring towns. Yep. We attend the same church. Yep. And a couple of years ago, you were newly married and you texted me, you emailed me, or yes, I Skyped me, or Instagrammed me. I don't know what you said. <laughs> and you said, I would love for you. What did you say? I needed a mentor. A mentor. Um, yep. And you asked for a marriage mentor. And I said, I can't help you there, sister. <laughs> I've been married. But you said, I'll buy you coffee. I've been married almost 20 years and I do not have the thing figured out. So I think I said, I don't I don't know that I'm the right marriage mentor, but let's have coffee. Yeah, yeah. And so we have a favorite Starbucks. Yes, we do. And we like to hang out. And um, Meg loves Jesus. She loves the church. She's super fun. <laughs> I want to know your perfect Friday night. Perfect Friday night. I'm kind of boring. Honestly, I call myself an extroverted introvert. I can go into a crowd. I can do the parties. But my perfect Friday night, I'm going to be, I mean, if it's a nice night outside, I'm going to take a hammock. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a book. I'm going to take my mug of tea. And I'm going to go and be quiet that and enjoy the outdoors. Hopefully my husband is there. That's my perfect Friday night. Nice. That's why we get along. That sounds yes. pretty great. Nice. And Keisha and I are real friends too, we but are. we don't yeah. live near each we other. Live, no. I live in the Midwest. And where do you live, Keisha? L.A. L.A., baby. L.A., baby. Always <laughs> been in L.A., girl. Always. Yeah. Born and raised in Cali. Okay. So I'm a city girl. Love that. And what's your perfect Friday night? Perfect Friday night. Netflix and chill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Netflix and chill. We could be my friends. Yeah. We could be friends. Because yeah. if you need me to spend my Friday night out with yeah. yes. cute clothes on, right. yes. doing things, that's, no, yeah, that's I can't. I'm. I need no. to. I, I, I. Netflix or hammock. Right. Does both, that mean we're getting old? I think it does. I, I think mean, that's what it means. But Meg's young. Know, Meg's okay. Not to call you the old. But lady. don't you think <laughs> that's my perfect Friday night? Don't you think the older we get? 
the more the that more, we just want to stay home. Just want to stay home. Yeah, home I know. I know. I, yeah. I'm the same. Yes. So we're not here to talk about our favorite Friday night. Yep. We're here to look at the story of Abigail. And we don't we don't get a lot of information about her in Scripture. We It's all contained in one chapter, yes. uh, 1 Samuel chapter 25. So if you're following with us, we'd love for you to go ahead and open your Bible there. And in the first episode, we didn't make it very far into the story. We were introduced to the three people who are really the players in this story, David, who's not yet king, but he's been anointed king. And Keisha, remind us, what is David doing when we meet him in 1 Samuel 25? Well, he's actually grieving. Samuel just died. So he's grieving. He's fleeing from Saul. He's stressed. So he has a lot of emotions going on. He does. That's right. And then we meet Nabal. And scripture doesn't pull any punches about the kind of guy Nabal is. And every time we talk about Nabal... My heart kind of sinks. Yeah, we are not. We don't like him. Yeah, it does something. <clears throat> yeah. The Bible tells us that he's harsh, yeah. that he's wicked in his dealings, he's that he's rude. badly behaved, yeah. he's rude. We're about to see in this episode that those things are true. The yes. man is rude. And then we see kind of the human heroine of the story. Yeah. Jesus is the hero of every story. Right. The Bible is about him ultimately. Right. And he's the one that's going to bring redemption in this story. But the human heroine of this story is Abigail, Abigail, the namesake of the study. We love her. And every interaction we see with her, we're going to love her more. We're going to see her in this episode respond to a difficult man in a difficult situation with grace and poise. And so let's dig in. Meg, would you read us 1 Samuel 25, 4 through 8? I can. While David was in the wilderness, he heard that Nabal was shearing sheep. So he sent ten young men and said to them, Go up to Nabal at Carmel and greet him in my name. Say to him, Long life to you, good health to you and your household, and good health to all that's yours. Now I hear that it is sheep shearing time. When your shepherds were with us, we did not mistreat them, and the whole time they were at Carmel, nothing of theirs was missing. Ask your own servants, and they will tell you. Therefore, be favorable toward my men, since we come at festive time. Please give your servants and your son, David, whatever you can find for them. Okay. So that's kind of old-fashioned language we hear talking. And it's good health to you, Good health. (laughs) Peace to you. Peace to your household. (laughs) But what is David ultimately asking of Nabal? Give us some snacks. Give us some snacks. Please, right. yes, please. We were nice to hear, guys. Yeah. Cheap shearing time. There's, You're going to have abundance. There's abundance. There's going to be plenty. There's some festivities yes. that go around all that. And, and David and his men are on the run. Yeah. And he's saying, feed us. Feed yes. us. Can I invite myself over? Can I right. invite myself over? And how would you describe David's approach? Um, and what what tone would you say he takes with Nabal at this point? Keisha? I think he took a very... Um, humble route. Yep. Um, it seemed to be gentle, not overbearing, not demanding, but very humble and, you know, reminding Nabal of what he's going to have, how much abundance it's going to be, and we can we just get a little something from it? Mm-hmm. Just a little something. And he reminds him, hey, your, your shepherds have been among us and we didn't we do them it, harm. Yeah, We're going to we see in a minute that David is traveling with an army. Yeah. Yes. And they could have. They could have taken the sheep by Absolutely. force. Absolutely. They could have forced the shepherds into their own army. Yep. And he's saying, hey, yep. it's a little bit of, I scratched your back. Yes. You scratch my back. And he gives this blessing from the yes. beginning. So to me, it all sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah. Very reasonable. But Nabal responds in a way that isn't exactly reasonable. Keisha, can you read us verses 10 through 11? Sure. But Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants today who are each breaking away from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have slaughtered for my shearers and give it to men whose origin I do not know. Okay. Hmm. What's the tone here? Very, very sarcastic. That's yeah. what comes across mm-hmm. at least uh-huh. to me. Yeah. Who's David? Who are, who are you? Who are you? I've never heard this name David. Which, come on. Yeah, everybody had heard of David. Everyone's heard right. of David. He, th- this okay. is after he killed Goliath. <laughs> Everyone's heard of okay, David. Okay, so this is, a, there's, you're right. He's being sarcastic. He's yeah. heard of David. Yes. And then what's this deal? What, why doesn't he want to give the meat and the sheep and the servants? What's his hang up? Well, I think 
verse three tells us he's just harsh and evil. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's who he is. That's who he is. Yeah. That's right. This is just this probably his wasn't posture. out of character. No. Right. No. Yeah, that's his character. Yep. So. And there's there's a scarcity mindset. You know, yes. we can operate out of scarcity or we can operate out of abundance. And right. we see scarcity yeah. in him. Yeah. Like, why would I give you my things? Right. You know, get some for your own. Right. And then there's this there's lots of servants breaking around away from their masters a little bit. Nobody passive passive aggressive. Aggressive. Like, aggressive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yes. you know what? Passive aggressive is aggressive aggressive. It's you very know? aggressive. It is not any more gracious. No. It is not any more kind. It is not any more godly to kind of come at somebody sideways like that okay i thought i was the only one who felt like that yeah why okay. rather you come at me please come at me yeah. just just come right at me i can deal right. with anything head on head on but those little sideways comments Aaron, we are t- no no, t- no no i don't want those sideways comments <laughs> so david comes at david makes a reasonable request of nabal and nabal responds with sarcasm yeah. he is patronizing yeah. Um, he is seeking to humiliate a little bit. We see this harshness in him. Meg, how do you think you'd respond? Somebody comes at you with sarcasm and passive aggressiveness. What does history tell you about your response? <laughs> um, I think I see this just in daily life for sure. But a couple years ago, I had a very difficult boss. Mm. Um, and I actually left that position because he was extremely verbally abusive. Mm. And so this passage was really difficult for me to work through because it felt like it was smacking me back in the face. And mm. I was right back in that seat in that office. Mm. And I would just go home and sob um, because those kinds of words just put you down to size absolutely and they're designed to put you in your place Mm -hmm. and to lord it above you Mm -hmm. um i think my response a lot of times was to shrink Mm -hmm. which i love seeing later on that abigail's posture is not one that has shrunk Mm -hmm. even living among nabal um she very much deals with conflict head on she's honest she even addresses the evil Mm -hmm. yes you know, she's not sideways about that. She's not sugarcoating what she's lived with. Yeah. She calls it for what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's what I should have done is to address the evil or yes. the harshness for what it is um, without shrinking. You know, we all have encounters with navels from time yes. to time. And whether they're, it's a daily drip of that or it's just somebody random in the airport, um, I think we need to be equipped through the Word of God. Yeah, that's a good point because I think oftentimes we have a misconception of what godliness looks like. Sure. And sometimes godliness to a lot of people is to shrink and to just be almost dormant, Mm -hmm. you know, and and to not vocalize, you know, yourself and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, be assertive. Yeah. Yeah. But this story shows that there is a time for us to be Mm -hmm. assertive and still be godly. Yep. You know, so I think that's a good point that you My made. My husband's so good at that. I say that he rides a white horse. I mean, he just, he's just has the strong sense of justice yes. and he just runs in with the sword drawn to all these circumstances. And there have been times that it's been embarrassing to me. Like we were at yeah. a basketball game and the coach was cussing and we were sitting right behind him and my husband with our kids said, you're not going to talk like that in front of my children. Am I? face turned 72 shades of red. I was like, (laughs) but I think that was the right response. We're at a family basketball game. There's kids here and you're dropping this language that's not appropriate. I think it was a godly response. So I think Abigail's going to show us that there are times Mm -hmm. that we stand up and that that's a righteous response. Um, Nabal's response reminds me of Proverbs 15.1. I'm going to read it to us. A soft answer turns away wrath. Mm -hmm. But a harsh word stirs up anger. Um, And that is just a little nugget for us to file in our hearts as we're looking for truth from this story that we can apply to our lives. A soft word turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up anger. And that's exactly what happens here. Harsh words are the behavior. And it's easy for us to think of times when people were harsh to us, um, but I always want us to flip that Mm -hmm. and think about our own harsh words. And when we do, that's the behavior, but we need to dig deeper. What does Jesus tell us about our words, Meg, in Matthew 12, 34? You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
The mouth speaks what the heart, heart is, is full, full of. of. That is a really convicting principle. Yes. That, that our mouth is just the plant above the surface. And it reveals yeah. what is in the root of our heart. Yeah. And so the way that I think of that is that it's impossible for me to say what I don't mean. I might say something I didn't mean somebody to hear. To hear. I might right say something loud. I didn't yeah. mean for that reaction to happen. <laughs> right. But if I if it comes out of my mouth, it existed yeah. first in yes. my heart. And so I think I've wasted a lot of energy asking the Lord to fix my mouth right. when I need the Lord mm-hmm. to fix my right. heart. So Keisha, can you take us back to verse 11? We're going to read Nabal's words again, but I want us to think through that grid that, yeah, these are the words, but they're revealing something about the heart. Can you read us verse 11? Sure. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat <laughs> and that I have slaughtered for my shearers and give it to men whose origin I do not know? Yeah, that was the right emphasis. What do we hear? My, 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 my. my. In just a a, a brief sentence, Nabal is talking a lot about himself. So we would have to, we'd have to assume here, we'd have to make some assumptions. Scripture doesn't tell us the heart of Nabal. Have you noticed the Lord doesn't tell you the hearts of others? Yeah. What is that about? I know. Just tell us. I don't think we have any right to assume the heart of another human being. That's the Lord's territory. territory. It's not our territory. Only He knows. Only He knows. So He doesn't tell us what's going on in Abel's heart. But by the my, 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 we hear in Nabal. What sort of things can we assume are in the heart of Nabal? What did you hear there, Keisha? I heard selfishness. I did too. Self preservation. Self preservation. -preservation, Yep. Anything else? Stinginess. Stinginess. I hear pride. Pride. Yeah. Definitely um, pride. Which is, you know, an inflated sense of self. Yes. Right. Uh, thinking about me versus yeah. thinking about others. Yes. And so just in those few words, we can peel back the soil a little bit and go, ooh, we don't like the root of that. Right. So we can dig back the soil of Nabel's words and see some roots there and go, ooh, we don't like those. And that's an interesting discussion, maybe. But Nabal's gone. He's long gone. He's in the ground. And so his heart attitudes are moot, but our heart attitudes are not. So I wonder if the Lord has shown you in your own life what your harsh words reveal, what heart attitudes your harsh words reveal, Meg. Okay, so for me, it's in the embarrassing moments. It's in the little stuff that shouldn't get my dander up. Mm -hmm. And I was processing this going through the study and really trying to get to the heart of it and it wasn't any mystical thing when I feel vulnerable Mm -hmm. or like I'm at a place where I'm maybe insecure about something or you know whatever it may be that's thrown me off my groove that's when I feel like I need to prove that I have the upper hand Mm -hmm. that I have it put together one upsmanship yes and that's when I respond to people with don't you know my time is valuable Mm -hmm. Don't you know that I'm too busy? That, you know, right. how could I bend for you? Right. I'm important. <laughs> I'm valuable. And it's coming out of this. I'm trying to speak that to myself. I'm I'm feeling vulnerable or insecure. And I'm trying to trump myself up out of that. And so I'm responding to you in that way. Yeah. Wow. And don't you think if we dig a little deeper, don't you think insecurity is always a faith issue? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's absolutely. God's not going to take care of me here. Absolutely. He's not yes. going to protect me. Yep. Yes. He's not going to make sure I'm well esteemed. Yes. He doesn't have my back. I mean, we don't think that in the moment that the harsh word oh, comes yes. out. But I think insecurity is a faith issue. 100%. What do you think, Keisha, when you think of the circumstances in which you are harsh, mm-hmm. what heart issues do you think are underlying? I think underlying it's pride. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I say that is because if you feel you have to defend yourself, yeah. you're kind of thinking yourself a little bit more important sure. than you ought to. Sure. If you have to defend yourself when someone yeah. offends you, you know, all the time, you have to defend yourself. Yeah. So I think underlying is pride. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pride issue. Sure. Yeah. And just not being able to humble yourself and allowing mm-hmm. someone to have the one up on you. You mentioned the one up. So right. just... N- allowing that person yeah. to be the, the one that's above you for what you know in that situation so yeah. i think pride don't you think and pride, impatience don't you think pride exists in every human heart yes no i'm so yes. sick of my battle with pride i'm sick of it. i'll look forward to the day when i know the lord fully as i've been fully known and yes. my pride is a former thing yes. but until then 
We have, have to, to battle, battle with it. it. Yeah. And humility is such a slippery thing. I mean, the second you think you're humble, nope. Something <laughs> comes to show you you're not. You're not. And that yeah. never feels good, but it's ultimately grace. Yes. Because if the Lord is revealing a pocket of pride in you, um, that's a, an opportunity to surrender. Yeah. And so your words can be really a flag, a flare that yes. shoots up that goes, wait a minute, wait we a still minute. got a pocket of pride. Yes. My harsh words reveal anger. Yeah. And um, I did not think I was angry person. And then I had four children in 10 years, <laughs> um, all boys. And um, that's where my harsh words come out the most. And I hate that. Yeah. I mean, those are the people that I would throw myself in front of yes. a bus for. Yeah. And yet those are the people most impacted by my yeah. sin. I hate yeah. that. I'm so glad the Lord will redeem it. Yes. But those harsh words are not because... They're disobeying me. Those harsh words are not because I'm tired and they baby kept me up all night. Those harsh words are not for any reason other than I have anger in my heart. Yeah. The Lord has used my children to expose it. I wouldn't have known it was there. I would have never repented for it. I would have never needed the Lord as much as I do. Yeah. I mean, I would have needed him. I didn't yeah. have known how much I needed right. him. Right. Um, so those harsh words, when we speak them, there's a the opportunity there to pause and ask the Lord, what's going on here? Yeah, um, they reveal our need for him. Think of those words, whether they come out as harsh or insensitive or rude. Think of them like the tip of the iceberg yes. and the sin is the iceberg underneath. Yes. And I want us to just practically um, walk a woman through what does it look like to repent as you're listening to this and you're going, oh, oh. There's some hard attitudes here that I need the Lord to help me with. Practically, what does it look like to repent of those hard attitudes? I would say first you have to confess it. Mm -hmm. You have to acknowledge and agree, right? Agree with God that this is a sin issue here. Yeah. Not try to sugarcoat it, justify it. Blame it on yes. the person. So take ownership of that sin and confess it to the Lord. I think that's the very first step. Yep. That's I right. Yeah. Meg, any other thoughts on what repentance looks like? For me, it has definitely been mentor relationships. Our relationship has been really important for me in that way. Um, maybe it's a my age group. Maybe it's all ages. But I think we tend to gang up with our best buddies that are going to... Um, Affirm you agree with, with yes. us that are going to sugarcoat it and I need somebody that's going to shoot it to me straight and say hey that's not okay um, and that I'm repenting in honesty and like you said acknowledging it for for what it is, what it is yeah. I've called Meg out on a few things you have. <laughs> yeah but that's what a good mentor godly woman is for it's what I need yeah. and we need it I'm so glad you said that I'm so glad from a 23 yeah. year old yes. right yes. because I often say this is what we need. So to hear it from your perspective that this is it. what we need. We need, we need this in the body. We need the accountability. And we need someone who's going to call us out yeah. and point us in the right and direction. And we need to be that for others as well. And we, we need, need to, to be, be willing to, yeah. to be that for All others. All the research and, and our lives show that young women want that. They want a true speaker in their life. They want, I think we sometimes get bogged down on the mentor word. Yeah. They want that. They want right. that true speaker. And and we as older women, Keisha, we're the older women. Yeah. We have a right. responsibility. <laughs> we're the older and women. And to call somebody to repentance, though never easy and never. always messy, um, is ultimately a gift because when we repent, we can turn. So if the Lord, as you're listening to this podcast, if you feel that conviction, I would encourage you to confess it to the Lord yes. and confess it to somebody else. That's confess biblical. To others. Confess so your sin pray. one to another yeah, and pray, for, pray one for one another. It's not about airing your dirty laundry no. necessarily. Um, it's a biblical principle that, hey, this is in me. I can't fix it on my own. Yeah, I, I want to turn. I need help. So let's read David's response. Now, let's remember who David is. This is the man who slays giants. Yes. This is the man anointed king. <laughs> with, he's on with the, the run, but the he's stone. a warrior. Right. He just spared Saul's life. We'll visit right. that soon. This yes. is no shrinking violet of a man. Right. And in verse 13, and David said to his men, Every man strap on his sword. I don't know if he said it like that. But. Every man strap on his sword and every man of them strapped on his sword. I mean, this is a man who leads men. Yes. When he says, get your swords, They're the men get their swords. swords. 
And David also strapped on his sword, and about 400 men went up after David, while 200 remained with the baggage. I'm interested in that little nugget, like how much luggage did they have? <laughs> they needed 200 men to stay with to the stay luggage. With the luggage? That was a lot of you luggage. You think this is girls, but right. this is men. How many shoes did you pack? I know, that's a lot. <laughs> You know what that was? That was more swords. <laughs> it was yeah, just, exactly. That was his bags and bags and bags of right. swords. So, uh, but this is his response. He says, every man do your sword. And Nabal doesn't stand a chance. Yeah. This is yeah. Nabal versus 400 armed men. And this is really Proverbs 15, 1 in action. Yeah. I mean, a harsh word stirred up this anger in David and he's about to go to war I have four boys and this is what they do I say all of boyhood is one continuous war game I mean it's just like we're going to fight all the time about everything Um, and that this testosterone starts pumping and let's 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 wrestle with we don't know the answer but do you think this is a righteous response (sighs) I'm not sure I'm not either I'm not sure I want to say yes. Because it's David. Because it's David. We like and because him. we don't like Nabal. And right. But the reason why I would say no is because we know at the end, he basically thanked Abigail yeah. for interceding. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And for, for stopping him from shedding blood and yeah. having that guilt. So so that's the only reason why I would say lean to, yeah. towards no. But then I'm like, but... But we, we see, see David. David. We see, yeah. yeah. And so. we want Nabal to pay right. a little bit. <laughs> well, I, I right. will say this. I don't know if it's righteous or unrighteous. I don't right. know how the Lord would categorize it. But what we do see is that harsh words escalate. Yes. And there's a disproportionate response here. Mm-hmm. Because Nabal was just a jerk. Yes. And David's going to kill him. Yeah. Um, and so that is not a, a proportionate response. Right. And he's not just going to kill him. He's not going to go man to man. Right. He doesn't call him out and say, let's fight this out. He, says, he, brings, all yeah, he brings all his boys. He brings all And the they're going to slaughter him. The whole household. And so that's so, what harsh words do. Yes. And there's a principle in the study that's worth mentioning. I think it's the halt principle. And yes. it gives us pause. Yes. If we're hungry... hungry angry, lonely, Lonely, or tired, tired. we pause. pause. Because if we're hungry, I'm always hungry. Them hun- those hunger sure. pain? Hangry. Hangry and angry. Hangry and <laughs> angry. Are not and hangry. Good. Gets me every Sometimes time. somebody yes. just needs to throw me a cheese stick. <laughs> Which do you notice when it when we get into Abigail's response, one of the first things mentioned is she acts quickly and she grabs a bunch of food. food. She brings them food. She knows, she knows exactly how what to, to chill the situation. Yes. Knows when to get them some snacks. Yes. Yes. There might be some hangry going on. Yeah. <laughs> so if we're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, pause. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just pause. And meet that need. Stop before you speak. Because harsh words are going to come. We're going to be harsh towards others. And somebody else's behavior doesn't need to change our behavior. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so we need to know these principles that that harsh words stir up anger. Yeah. Our own harsh words are going to stir up anger. What harsh words can do is they can take what was a spark and throw kerosene on them. Yeah. And so we can respond with grace but also, we need to remember um, that harsh words are the plant, and what's the root? And that the root is a heart issue. And as we're going to continue to talk through this story, we're going to be reminded that only the Lord changes the heart. Yeah. So whether it's that person that's rude to you in the checkout line or cuts you off in traffic, or whether it's the difficult boss, or the unbelieving husband, or the friend who's just rude all the time. Right. Um, we don't need the Lord to work on their words or our own words as much as we need him to work on the heart. So I'm just going to reach through the microphone to the woman who's listening and, and pray for the Lord to remind us um, that he works in our hearts. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for the work you've already done in our hearts. None of our hearts would turn to you if you didn't do that work in us. And Lord, as we're talking about these heart issues, God, you are the master of our hearts. And I pray for the woman who has been listening and has experienced conviction. God, work in her heart. Your word is a sword. It cuts away the things that are not of you. And so in the way that only you can, God, reveal the heart attitudes that are causing those harsh words to bubble up, Lord. Help us to repent. Lead us to those people that we can confess our sins to so that ultimately we can be more like you. We love you. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen.